before this video even starts, I need you to leave a thumbs up on this video. Comment down below. I'm going to choose one person down in the comments below to send them a little goodie bag with a bunch of stickers, probably a Mop Boys keychain, and some other stuff. But a bunch of Scooter Swap Shop stickers, a bunch of Mop Boys stickers. I'm just going to throw a bunch in a bag, send them to one of the people down in the comments below. So make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and uh, watch the video. Jumping right back in to the F12. I love this thing. It's very fun. It's uh, A lot goes into it, and a lot of work has gone into it. So it's a very fun project, but uh, I'm stoked that today we get to do something big so uh, during the tuning process of this bike I've kind of realized that I'm running out of gears um, on the top end and we're just revving in the moon no matter what we do gear upgrade is pretty common and up gear is pretty common in most motors AF16 very common um, I haven't done one in a pre-bug yet I haven't really felt the need to so good on wheelie bikes and everything like that I just never had the reason to change it the AF16 uh, definitely needed it it was like just revving in the moon, it went nowhere in the top end and it just sounded like the crank was about to explode. Not happy with how fast it was spinning. So uh, we got the same deal kind of with the F12 and we went ahead and ordered some gears. So here we have our gear swap, our up gear kit. It's a 1442 uh, up gear Doppler gears, uh, straight cut gears. So they're gonna be a little loud in the top end, they're gonna be grindy, they're gonna be winding. We also got a couple goodies here, but I don't think we're gonna be putting them on in this video. Is a stage six variator kit, and then we got a new belt to try out too, because I was having some issues with the belts in the last video. So I went ahead and ordered a Melosi belt. Um, hopefully this will solve all our problems with that. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and hang this bike. You can do this in a few ways. The only problem is to be able to put something under the motor and hold the bike up, because you have to take the whole rear tire off. I would need to put something under it and the exhaust runs under the bike right there. I don't want to crush the underbelly panel on this because how it's designed, it's kind of weak in the center spot right there. So if I put anything under the bike, it might crush that. Um, I'm going to go with my old technique and that's to hang some ratchet straps through the rafters, hook it onto somewhere on the bike, lift it in the air so the back end's floating in the air. That's how I like to do it. That's how I like to do a lot of my stuff when I have to have the bike like that. It just works out better. It's a lot easier. So to do this. You'll need gears, a few tools that you actually need to remove the bolts, and then you're going to need a press to be able to press on the gears. So here I have my press here. All right, this is how I like to do it because look, now we're floating in the back. We got it strapped up to the rafters. It's in the center. It's balancing by itself. So now we're going to go ahead, drop this case, and then we're going to have to pull out the whole CVT, and then we'll get to the gearbox area. That's how we're looking in the gearbox area. We got all the gears pulled out. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. There we go, boys. So as you see, that one that we got pressed off. And then, see, you can see it from this way a lot more. Straight cut angle. To help with the smoother feeling in the gearbox, but the straight cut's gonna be consistent, but super notchy. Now, that's just what I understand of this. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the full benefits of the straight gears could be. There's probably a little bit more than I'm explaining, but that's as far as I know. So then we have our other shaft here, and then we have the one that's in the, the actual case itself. And as you can tell, it's not straight cut. So here we got our straight cut one. Go ahead and take it out of here. So as you can clearly see here, straight cut versus non-straight cut. So this one's gonna be a little bit harder. We're gonna have to put something in here to prevent this bearing from flying out. So we'll put something and then press it out. Yeah, we'll have to figure that one out. So I just set it in my table vise enough where it holds the bearing part, but not the shaft. That way it doesn't, uh... Now we're left with just the bearing in there. So we're looking good. Side by side, you can really see the difference in these. Look how much bigger that one is too. When I uh, talked about it in the last video, what I talked about was the ratio of how many times the rear pulley spins in the time that your wheel goes around. That's how you determine ratio on like a car. You count your drive shaft going around, how many times your actual wheel spins around when you count your diff ratio. So what we figured out, it was 12.7 to one. On the Honda Elite stock, it was 13 to one. So almost the exact same and then I got uh, an up gear on the Honda Elite, it made it 8 to 1. After we swap these gears in, we will see what it converts to. I'm thinking it's going to be like a 9 to 1, maybe an 8 to 1. I really don't know. 12, 13, 14, and this one used to have 11, 12, 13. So this one used to be 13, so now we're 14, and then on the, uh, I guess it would be the primary here, we have 42 on this one. This one was 13, 52. So now we're doing 14, 42, so we're actually losing like 10 teeth off the back. 
You've seen it here first, boys. So what we have to do now is this one actually stays the same. You only have to remove this one in order to pull this gear out. But this gear right here is the one we're, we're going to be swapping. As you can see, it's a whole lot smaller, 10 teeth smaller. So we got to put this in the press, press that one off, put this one on. Got a socket on the other side so it falls in there. Make sure we go on straight. Starting to press through. There she goes, boys. Boom. Oh! This one has a big concave in it, this one doesn't. Now we take this bad boy right here, same gear. I'll put a little bit of grease on the inside of that, press it on this way now. All right boys, we're pretty much ready. So I already set the one gear in there, now I need to put the actual gear that holds the wheel on. As you see, our gears are looking nice and they're spinning freely, so that's a good sign, you know? So put the bigger washer on first. Beveled one. Now, I already pushed this one into the gear cover, so we're looking good on there. One last thing to do is go ahead and mark the case, mark the clutch bell, and we will mark the tire. So now, I just went nine. We're under nine a little bit, so now we're at like eight, seven. A little bit less than 8.7 probably. 8.7 to 1. So we went from 12.7 to 1 to about 8.7 to 1. So it's pretty much the exact up gear that I did on the Honda Elite. So this should help this thing tremendously. I'll let the sealant dry a little bit. I only put a little bit of sealant on there. Just a little bit on the rim of the actual cover. And then just a little bit on the inside of the seal. And then just because I'm reusing the gasket. I would definitely get a new gasket. But I completely space buying one. And I wanted to get these in today. So, Alright just put gear oil in there. We can't really tell these are going to be some loud gears, boys, but... Boys, we're trying out the F12. First place we're going is the gas station, because we're about to run out of gas in this thing. We almost did last time we were riding it. Just making sure the gearbox feels smooth. Don't want anything like grinding on each other. Sounds good. Oh yeah, boys, that just made the biggest difference. We got the moped homie right there. Alright, boys. Definitely doesn't have as much initial punch, but, oh, it carries way longer now. 8, 55, punch at 30, oh it's got a good pick up at 30, 40, 50, 55, still pulling hard too. It's got max right now at 10.9 on the tack, where we said it because that could have been before, I'm really not sure. Bell. I didn't change the Melissa Bell, all the new pulley we got, so it's still the exact setup I had before. Still th 36 grams on the weights. Might be able to lighten the weights now a little bit, honestly, because now that the gearing's different, it doesn't spin as easy. So, like, it's a little bit of a dog right there, and then it just yanks, dude. Oh, it's screaming. Look at that. Right to 50. 55. Sixty. Sixty-five. Wow.
It seems like it likes its gearing a little better, even just coasting by itself. Like, I kind of used to have to be on the gas to get this thing in a wheelie, bro. I can almost do it at idle right now, because it just, like, it likes going, like, 20 miles per hour, just rolling. We didn't even port this cylinder, either. We could get a lot more out this bike. Alright, so, as you can see, we got a little bit, uh, we can get more fitment out of that belt, so... Um, we're gonna try this thing out, see if a fresh belt can't help us. We tried different belts in the other video, but none of those belts were guaranteed for this uh, setup or this motor. They were just literally random belts I had that were kind of the same length, so I was just trying them. But uh, we will go ahead and try this bad boy out. Uh, I'm not gonna lighten the rollers, although I want to right now. I want to try with this belt first, then we'll come back and mess with it. I just don't want to keep changing a bunch of things at once. I'm gonna do one thing at a time so I can really tell the difference. So Like this setup, look at that. That's just with it, how I can roll it back. It still has a little bit more. I think it's gonna sit all the way up in the pulley on this one. Ooh, this might be a good feel on this one. We're getting a lot more out of that. We can also probably even shim it and get a little bit more, but it feels like a little, still a little loose, so it can go a little higher. I think this belt's gonna change a lot right now. I'm thinking this might be the answer. Dude, it didn't really change too much on the bottom end though, not gonna lie. So I think that we can uh, change those weights again. Alright, just tighten up my clutch springs a little bit more. I also lightened the rollers by 3 grams, so we run 36 total. Now I'm running all 5.5, five, so we're at 33. Also, it looks like the belt was getting a little bit lighter on the Sharpie mark. So it's starting to go a little bit higher on the front pulley. We got a little bit more sitting in the back pulley. <laughs> I'm a dumbass and didn't record when I just went to test run it after I lightened the rollers three grams. So now I gotta go back and show you. And 20. 40. 45. 50. I didn't record, like I said. We got it to rev to 11,180. So almost 11,2. So we still got room. Um, it keeps going up as I'm going, it's not like it just revs out and stays there as I'm hitting 65 it's still climbing a little bit by a little bit so I don't know I feel like we got a little bit more to give how are we off the gate right now full throttle the whole thing it's wide open 30 35 40 45 50 55 60 11,390 on the attack, and our temps are still, we haven't hit over 266 is the max temp. Well boys, we're definitely almost getting full travel. As you can see, the Sharpie is like half of what it was now, so it's only that little bit on the tip now, and that's a good sign. But I do have a kit here with a Stage 6 Variator, which I really like the ramp style on the Stage 6 Variator. I really like these ramps that are in here and how like smooth and steep they are compared to the Molosi one when you see it. Um, that'll be in the next video. We have a new clutch spring in here. All it says is strong. Uh, I'm assuming it's probably a 2K. I'm gonna go ahead and lighten the rollers by three more. Right now we have all five fives in it, which is 33 grams total. Uh, we started off with 36, but right now I'm about to lighten the rollers even a little bit more, take off one and a half grams. So I'm gonna take, there's all five fives in there. I'm gonna take three five fives out and replace it with fives. I think we're running this pipe at a maximum though on this C16. This is a very mid-range pipe and you can really feel mid to like high area this pipe really is. But there definitely could be a better pipe on here if we're going for full high end and same with low end. But this pipe is kind of good for what I'm doing. I'm going to do a lot of mid power wheelies and riding on this thing. So it's not going to be a full pin bike. I'm not racing it. It's not going to be a bike I'm just putting around. Put us at 3150. So we could go down to, we're not going to feel too crazy of a difference, we could have went down to 30, but I kind of don't have another set of just straight fives. I don't really have a way to make 30 grams unless I do like a set of fours and then a set of, I believe what would be like sixes. And like I said, we're going to be changing this variator in this Contra next and trying something else next setup wise. So I know it's not going to be permanent, but I want to see if we can just make this thing a little better. 
Wow, boys. Wow, I wish I had this when we were in Seattle. That's all I think about when I ride this now. Well, I did have it, but I'm saying I wish I had it tuned when we went to Seattle. I literally had like stock clutch, stock pulling it still. It ran so bad off the takeoff out there. I rode it one time. That thing feels good, dude. So I think the highest we revved before was 11.380, I want to say. I'd be curious to see what we revved to just now. Well, boys, once again, I am blown away. I'm stoked. I love the F12. I really do. The scooter just keeps getting better and better. Everything everything we're doing to it is just adding to the recipe. And I love the F12. I could just I could just look at it all day. I think F12 is now top top list my favorite scooters. It used to be pre-bug, but I really gotta say I think F12's top. Uh, next time we will be trying out this stage six variator. Um, new Contra spring and we'll be comparing it to the multivar which I have in there right now, the Molosi multivar variator. I'm gonna show you more. Um, a little bit of the comparison of the two on the ramps and we'll see how those feel difference wise and in that video we will probably do a little bit more tuning get this thing perfect then we also have a whole new surprise for the F12 so although we we're keep changing it we're gonna be changing one more thing on it and it'll be interesting to see what we can do with it on the F12 so um, still debating if I should change the carb setup right now I have a CP21 I literally think this thing wants more. I really think I might throw a CP24 carb on it. I'm curious how that's going to do. Most people run a 21 on the Minarellis. We'll see. But that's going to do it for this one. Very stoked on the F12. I hope you guys are too. And I'll see you in the next one.